fight for you, obviously. Um, how does it feel right now, Wednesday morning, compared to if you were preparing for a bantamweight fight? It's, uh, man, it's night and day. You know, <laughs> we were talking about the weight cut, and I was like, it's almost laughable for me. Um, it's still not easy, but compared to what I was doing before for so many years, this is almost like a cakewalk. I, I, obviously, I don't want to underplay it. It's still going to be a tough weight cut. I'm still super lean. Um, I got like 15 pounds, which is a lot nicer than having 25. Yeah, absolutely. And I know you said the other day, I think you tweeted it, being like, I'm either going to you know, look fantastic or I might look terrible, but like, I'm willing to be that guy who rolls the dice. And that's been the case with you throughout your career. Um, but right now, like, do you feel like this is going to be a better version of yourself or is it too, too soon to know? We're going to find out Saturday night. I, I really don't know. I think the training has been looking great. Uh, we've gotten a lot of good matchups in the, in the training room, a lot of good feedback. I think all, all in all, we've been doing some really good stuff. And I'm proud of the work we put in. And I just got to go out there and perform. And I think if I do that, the best version of myself shows up. And I, I really always talked about this at 35. Um, but I was a little bit more green back then. But there's a lot that I feel like I haven't been able to show in the octagon just because of energy consumption, the weight cut. Um, I think now we're going to get to see a lot more of the, the flashy stuff and get back to the real funk. And facing Calvin Cater, who's long layoff, serious knee injury, um, you're never shy to throw an oblique kick, shoot for a takedown, things that you would assume would test the durability of his knee. Um, is that something you think about? Like, where is this guy going to be at physically? Nah, hopefully he's healed up, man. I, I don't wish any injuries or anything like that for any of these athletes. It's, it's hard enough trying to, trying to win a fight in the UFC, you know what I mean? So um, hopefully Calvin's 100% coming into this with his, his knee injury, and uh, I'm going to do what I got to do. It's not, I'm not trying to maliciously attack his knee. He's like, oh, I'm going to destroy your knee. Like, nah, I don't have any intent like that. I'm just going to use my grappling, use my kicks, use my, my punches. I'm fighting him everywhere and anywhere the fight goes. And where does a win here kind of put you in this division, do you think? Do you think there's any chance of you know, Max doing this BMF fight, uh, Volkanovski potentially wanting to take some time off? Could you backdoor your way into a title shot with one win? I think so. I think if Max goes out there, he wins. I think I go out there and I win and I look good doing it. Uh, Ilya Tepori already said what he said. He said there's no challenger, so why not just skip the line? instead of uh, getting in the tough gauntlet of a queue. Um, they, I mean, you'll see, they do what they want, right? So if they offer you a title fight, you'd be kind of crazy to tell them no. So if I go out there, do my job, I look good on a huge, massive card, I think the rest will take care of itself. I was right here. Uh, just, even outside of fight camp, is just life better in general? You know, not having that massive weight cut to 135, even when you know you're not preparing for a fight? Yeah, stupid questions don't, irritate me as much you know so it's a lot nicer i can talk to my friends and family i even i'm in a group chat and they're like wow you're talking on a monday <laughs> and i'm like yeah it's it's he's like 145 hits different I'm like yeah very very different it's uh nine days not even comparison like normally on this wednesday i would need to be about 145 pounds in order to be in striking distance uh, this morning i was 154.2 um so I'm just kind of, like I said, I don't want to underplay it, but it just feels like, I don't want to say cakewalk, but it's a lot easier, nicer, and um, I can enjoy life a little bit more, which I think will give me some longevity in the sport a little bit more than 135. Uh, back in the day when Dustin made the jump from featherweight to lightweight, he said it took maybe a fight or two to feel like an actual lightweight rather than just a featherweight that stops cutting weight to get to lightweight. Do you feel like an actual featherweight in there, or do you still kind of feel like a, just a bigger bantamweight? I don't know. I, I'm not going to know until I get in there with Calvin. I mean, I've been sparring with big 45ers, Julian Rosa, Dennis Bazookia, uh, Anthony Delemi, um, Kai Kamaka, Danny Gay. I've been, been getting some good rounds. Timmy Kwamba, who just got signed. And these guys, are they're not small dudes. So I like to think I've been having some pretty good rounds, some pretty good looks. And I think that's that gives me the confidence, you know? I, I do think Calvin might look at me like, oh, it's a little guy coming up. But... This little guy is strong, so uh, we'll, we'll see. I, I don't think he's overlooking me. I'm not overlooking him. I think this is a tough fight for both of us, and it just comes out to uh, who shows up on the night.
I think I saw an interview where you said you expected maybe a top five guy right away, but Calvin was the name they gave to you. Is there any thought of maybe waiting for those other featherweight fights to play out, or was kind of the allure of UFC 300 that pulled you to this fight? Definitely UFC 300, but um, I, to wait, I'm only getting older. I don't want to wait much longer. Like even my last fight, I asked for just an extra month so I could heal up my injuries first before getting into a training camp and, and trying to make shift the training camp. You know, but that's come and gone. Um, I'm already feeling like this was too long of a layoff. I think I had three grappling matches in the time the time off. You know, I like to be active. There was a point in my career where I had five fights in one calendar year uh, in a 12 month span, you know, so uh, I think this is the start of something fresh and new and uh, I'm looking forward to being active as long as I'm injury free, being active and competing as much as I can, trying to make as much money as I can and hopefully fight for a world title by the end of this year. The featherweight division obviously has a lot of high-level strikers, but they also have guys like Brian and Bryce Mitchell and Bob Zarr, who are all high-level grapplers as well. So do you think just the addition of you to this division, do you kind of put yourself at the top of that as like the better grapplers at 145 now? Yeah, I'm not going to toot my own horn. I think I'm pretty good, and I think those guys think they're pretty good. Um, I think our grappling is just a little bit different the way we use it. So it just comes to see who can blend it the best. I, I think um, I do things just a little bit differently than those guys. And even Tapori, he's, he's got some solid grappling that he hasn't really shown, but the guy can grapple. Um, you know, I'm not naive to know who's the best grapplers in this division. And um, with that said, I let the fans decide who they think is the best grappler and go from there. Last one for me, two quick ones. Can I get your thoughts on the main event and then the BMF fight between Justin and Max? Main event, man, that's a tough one. You know, but I'm rolling with my guy, Jamal Hill. I think that's a really tough fight. Obviously, he's coming back from a big injury. Uh, Poetan is on a huge wave right now. And he's got the momentum. Of course, Jamal just had an injury. He never lost the momentum. So it's going to be fascinating to see who poses their game plan first. I think Jamal's better when it comes to striking with the hands. I think uh, Poetan's got some really good calf kicks that Jamal just needs to be careful of. And I think if he can negate that with his reach, switch stance, uh, I think it should be a good night for him. And if he wants to grapple, he can actually grapple. Uh, I don't know how good Pereira's grappling is or his wrestling. And I think that's going to be the, the difference in that fight. And then you got the BMF belt. You got the volume of Max Holloway. I hope he gets back to his kicking. It would be nice to see him use all his tools in this fight because Gaethje's coming out with those kicks. Gaethje hits hard and I don't know that's a tough one I love I like both those guys I'm fans of both of those guys you know I, I watch them as often as I can I've gone back I've watched Max's UFC debut all the way to his last fight you know just studying doing tape even before I was even thinking about coming up to 145 it's just I like to see good technique good MMA and uh, what better guy to watch than a guy like Max and Justin Gaethje hey I'll go over here um I'll just quick Good question. question. Oh, sorry. Other than the change of weight class, are there any different things you're going to approach when you're looking at your featherweight tenure when you see those upper echelon guys at 45 compared to the roster at 35? What, so what's the question? Are there any things you're going to approach differently now during your 145 tenure when you see the top echelon of guys at the 145 roster? Approach differently? I, I, I don't think so. I mean, still study tape, be a student of the game. I'm not planning on changing any of those things that help get me to the top of 135. I just got to continuously be me and uh, just have the confidence to do what I do in the training room and let it fly on fight night. And I think good things are going to happen. Uh, looking at the upper echelon, it's, it's a stacked division, especially when you get to the top of 145. There's some real good talent there. Uh, it, it'd be interesting to see how I match up with those guys. And after us, you've made it clear for a bit now that you wanted to eventually make this move up to 45. So. Did it sting a bit knowing that the O'Malley fight didn't go your way, seeing that potential fight that could have happened maybe between you and Volk at the time when you were both champs of 35-45? Oh, 100%. I, I, I'd be lying if I said <laughs> I'd be lying if I said it didn't bother me. Um, you know, it's not like O'Malley's a bad fighter. He, I think he's a really good fighter. I just think the timeline was very fitting for him. And as a champion, you know, it would have been nice to have the time off that I requested. But, uh, you know, things happen behind the scenes and... At the end of the day, I signed the contract. I thought I could pull it off. I came up short, and the better guy won that night. So it is what it is. I would like to get that one back, especially if I can win the belt at 145. He's talking about, uh, I want to go get the jet and go to Spain. Like, bro, worry about Marat first, and let me worry about Calvin. If I get through Calvin and I can win the belt again, 
I would love to get that one back on that skinny guy. I, I would love to get that one back. Last one for me, you finally got your fight at the T-Mobile Arena that you've been wanting to do for a while now. So how did that feel? And obviously on this occasion at 300. To be on T-Mobile. Yeah. First time fighting T-Mobile, I fought at Mandalay Bay twice, my UC debut, Ronda Rousey versus Sarah McMahon, Danny Cormier versus Patrick Cummins. Um, I'm just, I'm pumped to be on this, man. This is an opportunity of a lifetime for a lot of people. There's a lot of eyeballs, a lot of attraction, a lot of people are gonna be watching, tuning in. And if I go out there and, and I show out, it's, it just opens up a lot more doors, even from what I have open now. Um, and we don't know how the sport is, what have you done for me lately? So if I go out there and do my job in a good way, I think it opens up a lot of opportunities for myself. Aljamain over here. Um, were, were you ever offered a rematch at 135 after losing the title? Because you have a lot of title defense. No, I was not. Unfortunately, it was not. I did ask for it, but I was told, you know, we can't do that. <laughs> so yeah. it's, uh, it's just, I don't know. I, I just look at championship reigns a little bit differently. Everything matters for me. It's not just the way that you win. It's the storyline behind it. If you go out there, you fight guys that are not ranked and not that are not the best guys. There's something that just doesn't sit right. For me as a true competitor, I get the entertainment aspect of it and I appreciate that. Get your money. But to try to say you're the best or you're fighting the best challenges of all time, it, that's the part that kind of rubs me the wrong way when it comes to anybody, not even just O'Malley. You should fight the next best guy in line because otherwise, what are we doing this for? Like, we tooth the nail clawing to get to the top and then you get denied because another guy is a bit more popular or because it's a little bit more of an interesting storyline. Like, I get the business side of it, but the athlete side of it, it stings a little bit, you know? So, uh, hopefully, hopefully Marab writes the ship, which I think he will. And uh, just go from there. I, I, I'm not bitter about it. Like I said, O'Malley just took an opportunity that the UFC gave him, and he made the most of it. And unfortunately for me, I was the sacrificial lamb. But uh, it is what it is. Are you ever worried that could happen again in your career? No, because next time when I say no to my manager and to my team, I'm just no. You know, when I say no ten times, and then eventually I, I wilt. You know, I succumb to the pressure a little bit, and. At the end of the day, I'm a grown ass man. I made my decision, I live with it, but I know if that opportunity came again, I just wanna do it, you know? I, I know what makes me happy. I know what the mindset I need to have to go into a fight, and I don't think anyone should be fighting unless you're 100%. I think that's why Izzy took a break, because it, it does take a mental toll on you, you know? And just last thing on 135, what do you, what do you think about Umar Nurmagomedov in the division? It looks like he's gonna fight Corey Sanhagen next. Do you, do you feel like that is a tough matchup for Corey? Yeah, it's definitely a tough matchup. Umar's a stud. Uh, Corey's a stud as well. I think the striking aspect is going to play out because I don't know if Umar's going to be able to get Corey down as easily. And I know he's good when he gets on top. He has really good top pressure, really good control. He's a strong dude. It's just whether or not he could do that to Corey Sanhagen, who moves a lot. Not an easy guy to take down. Um, I think for me, I fought him at the apex, so I kind of had, kind of had it a little bit rigged, you know, right out of the gate. But. Uh, in a big cage, maybe it's a completely different fight, so I don't know how Umar handles that, but he's a good wrestler. I think he will have a good game plan, and I think Corey's gonna have a good game plan as well. And just last one? Oh, sorry, sorry just last one for me. Um, I know Calvin has done some training in Vegas before. Had you ever trained with him before, or at least crossed paths in the gym? We, Calvin, Kaden, and I actually trained when I was an amateur. Um, I'll let him talk about that. But I was an amateur, I think he was an amateur or a pro. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I was doing a lot of stuff I saw on YouTube videos and it happened to work. But that was 2000, I think nine or 10, you know? So we haven't gotten the chance to train again. I would have loved to. I, I always thought I was gonna fight his teammate, Rob Font. I think I trained one of his other partners, some, some skinny guy. I think he also fights at 45. Um, we, we had some light sparring in Nashville when Dennis Bazuki had made his UFC debut and I flew out. But I don't know. I mean, I, I kind of know what Calvin brings to the table, but we trained that one time, and that was years ago. He's a completely different fighter. I'm a completely different person as well. I mean, honestly, I think I could fight to 40 if I really wanted to, at the way I'm feeling. Um, will I do that? Hopefully not. <laughs> that doesn't. Fighting at 40 just seems like everything just hurts. The leg kicks hurt. Everything hurts just so much more. It takes a lot longer to heal the older you get. You don't bounce back the same. Uh, yeah, 
We'll see. We'll see. I definitely think I got a little, a little bit more in the tank now. We'll see how this fight goes, and I can make an educated decision on how much longer I want to do this.